state one zero on an output one one on an input zero. We go to state zero one with an output um, with an output one zero on an input one. Two possible inputs. 
And I'm only interested, I'm not interested in the cost of every possible path. I'm only interested in the, cost, in the minimum cost of all the possible paths. So therefore, um, well, one thing to notice is that each of these states will have an input number of errors associated with them. So let's say the cost of getting to this state is, is zero errors. The cost of, actually, here's maybe a smarter way to think about it. Um, let's say the cost of getting to this state is two error, is one error. And the cost of getting to this state is four error. In other words, let's say that there's an infinite trellis back here, and in total, paths getting to here, there's one the cost of one error getting to here, and the cost of four errors getting to here. So there's two possible edges that I can that I can use to get to here. So this this edge uh, corresponds to an output of one one, and this edge corresponds to an output of zero zero. So um, to take this edge, if my true output is 1, 1, then to take this edge, I'm assuming that zero errors occur. To take this edge, I'm assuming that two errors occur. <coughs> but the overall cost is cumulative. So four errors occurred to get here. An additional zero errors occurred. So therefore, the total cost of the entire path up to here including this edge is four, whereas the total cost of this entire edge up to here is one. This additional part is two, so therefore the total cost up to this point is three. Now, it doesn't matter, at this point, all that matters is the cost. It doesn't matter how I got there. So, um, paths that enter here, basically I want the minimum. So paths that enter here will continue off on various trajectories down there. But I have the option of, so um, at this point, I have the option of picking the path up to this point that is three errors, or picking the path up to this point that is four errors. I want the minimum, so therefore I can keep the three and throw out the four. The reason is, all the paths, there's lots of paths entering and lots of paths leaving. If I have a path through here that costs three, and another path that costs four. All the paths uh, leaving here and eventually entering the all zero state, they will each have costs associated with them that will be added to either three or four. So therefore, the minimum must include the three path, not the four path. Yeah. So for every uh, section, we just need to uh, compare and calculate just uh, two points, because the thing is that once we have selected three, from three, we can only go to two other points. That's right. So we need to calculate those two states, and whichever is the least, then go ahead like that. So we don't exactly. need to. Okay. So the idea is, um, into each state, at each time, into each state, you only keep, you calculate all the possible costs of all the input paths, but you only need to keep the minimum. So in other words, for four states, you only need to keep four paths at any time. Finally, at the end, you know that the system must end in the all zero state. So in the end, you, you pick the shortest path that enters the all zero state. So that's basically how it works. So the Viterbi algorithm works like this. Start in the all zero state. What that means in practice is that the cost, initial cost, of the all zero state is zero, and the initial cost. states. 